you've seen all of these parts come to the party before. We've got two SS58s, my tactical delta loop hub. And uh, that's going on top of my multi-configuration coil, which is going to take the ground radial puck. That's going to sit on top of the single extension. And then I'm going to put an isolator between the bottom extension and my tripod. And I'm going to add a radial. Let me take you to a special place here in the HOA and show you what we're up to today. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4 BMG HOA Ham, and today we're going to talk about an attic antenna. Let me tell you two reasons why you might want an attic antenna. One of them has nothing at all to do with living in a homeowners association. And oh, by the way, we're going to use this antenna, which was up backyard portable just several weeks ago. It is a dipole or a short vertical with a very large cap hat because both of these whips are transmitting my signal because my signal is coming up through the coil and there is not a positive and a negative side. There are two positive sides. So that's either a large capacitance it's at on a short vertical or it's a dipole of sorts. The experts couldn't decide the answer to that question in the last video. But I decided to take that antenna because it works so good. It's such a small footprint, backyard portable, I thought, that needs to go in the attic. Why would you have an attic antenna? Well, let's just say that you don't live in an HOA as I do, and you don't care um, about this being visible outside, but you do live in a geographical region where severe storms are typical this time of year. It's early July, and we are susceptible to hurricanes all the way through November of this year, 2025. So when I have tropical storms that come this way, or maybe a Cat 1 hurricane, Cat 2, and I'm deciding to stick it out here, um, Cat 2, maybe Cat 3 and up, we're out of town. That's our emergency preparedness plan. But let's say it's a tropical storm and a Cat 1 and I decide to stay here. I normally take my outside antennas down. I don't want them destroyed in the storm and down they come, but I still want to be able to get onto the hurricane watch net. And so this goes into the attic. So a very good reason to have an attic antenna is during extreme situations where your outside antennas could be destroyed and you still want the capability to communicate. Because if the wind comes through at 2 a.m. and it's dark outside and my outside antenna comes down, this antenna would still be functional and operational. The second reason would be if you live in an HOA, and I do, and nobody can see that I have this antenna, so I can operate on HF to my heart's content. Now, this would be a multi-banded antenna, but you have to tune it. Right now, the coil is tuned to 20 meters, so I am operating 20 meters. So this is what I'm doing. I took that T antenna, which in my opinion has a large capacitance hat on top of a short vertical. I decided to put it in the attic based on how well it worked outside. I have one single radial, 12 and a half feet long. This just across the plywood decking. If I were doing this permanent, I would not have that touching any of the wood material because I don't want any of this antenna touching any of the wood material. That whip right there is not touching that 2x4 truss. It just looks like it's close because of the angle of the camera. It is not touching. I was blown away by how well this worked. Let me show you the setup of it real quick here up in the attic space. My experience with attic antennas is they work really good on digital modes. FTA, Whisper, any other digital modes that you might be using, they work average on single sideband voice. That's why I'm constantly changing out attic antennas, trying to find the perfect one. This one worked actually pretty good. Band conditions weren't great. The evening that I set this up, I was able to make half a dozen contacts. We're speeding up this little section here because you don't need to see this uh, backside of me for very long. I'm just going to disconnecting my coax from my loop antenna over there. That is a 100 watt MFJ loop that I can control and tune from within the shack. My objective here is to set up this antenna as quickly as possible, this T antenna, and that's why I brought it into the attic pre-assembled. It is an overcast day, 
in the middle of the day, but it is July. So the temperature is running about 100 degrees here. So having this pre set up allowed me to shorten the amount of time that I was stuck here in the attic space at 100 degrees. I had a hunch the 27 inch extension might be too long. It did make the antenna not fit in this very narrow space. It's probably, I don't know, less than 40 inches tall here up into the peak. So I did take with me a 12 inch extension that's actually manufactured to work with the multi-configuration coil. There's not a lot of room for me here in this shallow roof pitch, which was typical of homes that were built here in the Tampa Bay area 50 years ago. It does make it challenging to put attic antennas up. Something you do need to think about if you're going to put up an attic antenna is do consider the construction of your roof. This is plywood sheeting and it is a asphalt shingle roof. If you have a metal roof, you've got a Faraday cage. If you have um, a radiant barrier on the plywood, which would look somewhat like um, aluminum foil on the inside of that plywood, you've got a Faraday cage. And if that's what you have, then you really don't have the ability to get RF out of the attic space. If it is just plywood decking and asphalt shingles, the RF really doesn't have any trouble getting out. Anytime I install an attic antenna, I make sure that none of the radiating elements touch any part of the wood structure. And I also make sure that my radials are not touching the wood structure. I did run FT8 here at 100 watts. And I did that just because I was testing the antenna. I did it for a very short period of time. If I was running this antenna on a regular basis, I would actually run digital modes at a much lower wattage output. And again, making sure that no parts of my antenna are touching the wood structure. I think the reason why is obvious. Once I get my telescoping whips here fully extended, I will go through the process of uh, checking my SWR before I put the radio on. I, I just have a habit of doing this. I like to see how antennas are performing before I use any kind of radials. Do I dare call it a ground radio? It's not touching the ground. It's touching some decking that's 12 feet up in the air off the ground with a concrete floor underneath it. I do this just to see what my SWR reading is. I'm installing this in a non-standard configuration, so I check things all along the way. And of course, my SWR wasn't satisfactory. So I do install the 12 and a half foot radial, just one single radial here. I put that on this antenna. I get the SWR just under two to one. I could have fiddled with it a little bit more, added a second radial, but to be honest with you, as long as I was up here and I did run some of this video at fast speed, I, once I got under two to one, I'm thinking to myself, this is good enough for my testing. I want out of this 100 degree attic. I'm good to go. So here's my SWR reading. Let's go operate. QSL the 5-9 and Papa Alpha, your 5-9 Tampa, Florida. Copy 5-9 Florida. Thank you for being out there. Have a good evening. 73. 73 and have a blast. Whispers in indicator mode, where is your signal getting to? I've had compromised antennas that didn't do near this good. I was pretty impressed with how well I got out across the world and specifically in North America. I know many of you are huge FT8 fans. I use it for testing antennas. I usually run in 15 minute segments. You can see globally, I'm getting out into Europe as well as South America and all across the United States. Mike Echo Charlie calling. Tiki, Tiki, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf, Bob. 10 in Florida, Bob, I got you 5-9, the park you 2. QSO in the park, I have you 5-7, 5-7, Tampa, Florida tonight, friend. As I've mentioned, getting single sideband voice to work in an attic space is probably the biggest challenge. Many people do it. I've done it on other antennas, and this is one of the better of all the others that I have tried. Digital modes are usually pretty simple. Still, having an outside antenna will work better for you, but when those tropical storms come through my area here during hurricane season, this gives me a viable option to continue communicating. 
as is typical with these types of small compact setups that I've been doing. This is a duplicate of a uh, setup that I did outside. So it gets the same rating. It's only for portability and stealth. Well, portability, uh, this would just be the fact that it fits in my attic space in a very small footprint stealth yeah this is about as stealth as you can possibly get in an HOA the board of directors will never see this set up very easy to set up other than the fact that I was hunched over for about five minutes trying to get all the antenna components put together you can have band coverage from uh, 10 through 40 meters with this antenna set up. You're going to get a little bit more uh, difficulty on 40 meters. If you go back and look at the original video, you'll understand why I gave it these ratings. But do understand this would require tuning on each individual band. I set this up in the attic, tuned it to 20 meters. So from my perspective, I now have a 20 meter antenna up there in the attic space. If there was a reason for me to be on another band, most of the time I would go tune it specifically to that band. 20 meters is my favorite. That's why I'm tuned up here at 20 meters. With this antenna setup, we can do up the 500 watt single sideband, 300 CW, and 200 watts on digital modes. I wouldn't be running those watts in my attic space, right? This isn't just, um, you know, being concerned about the environment that the antenna is set up in. You don't want to have all that wattage coming back into your home. So, uh, even though the antenna is capable of that power output, I would never be running that in my attic space. A 100 watt single sideband, and if I were running digital here on any regular basis, I'd probably run it at 20 watts. Uh, just because of the feedback that I could have back into my home, into my mechanical systems, my electrical system. All of my electrical wiring is sitting in the garage electrical panel about 15 feet away from this particular setup, so I'm always aware of that. If you're going to install an attic antenna, understand the environment that you're putting it in. Final thoughts? This is one of the better attic antennas that I've ever installed. And I hope this gives you some ideas as well as, you know, some thoughts and reasons why you would want to do this even if you're not in an HOA. If you have antennas that are outside susceptible to severe weather incidents, this would be a good alternative for you if you can set it up in a space, have access to it, and operate safely. Hope you found this useful, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.